Not again! <laughs> Welcome to the show, everybody. I'm your host, Germ, and today I'm talking about Okami. But I'm not just talking about Okami. I'm talking about Okami HD, remastered and finally released on PC in 2017. Now, originally, Okami was released in 2006, developed by Capcom, and released on PS2. And over the years, it's continuously gotten released on new platforms, and finally we get a taste of it on PCs, which I'm really excited to talk about. This was my first time playing through Okami. I just clocked in 37 hours, and I'm really excited to talk to you guys today about all the good and all the bad in Okami. Now, Okami over the years has been critically acclaimed, praised for its visuals, and really established a legacy for the title. Is it perfect though? In my experience, no. And I'm gonna go through all those details with you today. So, do you hear that? <sighs> Shit, we gotta get this going because once this starts, oh no, 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 no. <sighs> Uh, uh, once this starts, it does not stop. It'll get stuck in your head. Oh no, 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 no. Let's get this going. Let's get this going before it gets real bad. Thanks for tuning in, everyone. And the first thing for Okami that I wanna talk about today is the settings. And the reason that I wanna start here is because on PC, the settings are extremely important. We're not all playing on the same system with the same controller. We have mouse and keyboard and different rigs and different monitors. So it's really important that we have the options available in the settings to make sure that we can customize the game to tailor our rigs and our play style. So let's check it out. The first thing in settings I wanna talk about is the ability to rebind keys. And this is a major issue in Okami where you literally can't rebind anything to alternate keys on your mouse or your numpad. There's only a really small selective number of keys around WSAD that you can change your keys to. So if you typically rebind mouse keys or your numpad, you are shit out of luck here. And it gets worse when you go into your actual menu where you can't use your mouse or scroll wheel to navigate through anything in your inventories. They force you to take your hand off your mouse and use your arrow keys, which also can't be rebound. And I need to grind on the menus a little bit here because not only do they force you to use the arrow keys, you also have to use backspace and enter to select an item or exit an inventory that you're in. So major fail on the key rebindability. Going into audio, all the basic options are here, and thank goodness that they have a voice level option here. You got a little taste of it in the intro, and I'll talk about it later, but holy shit, it was a game saver for me that I could turn the voices off in this game. So I just wanna highlight that for a second because this option is your friend. Let's go into the video settings now where they have two aspect ratio options, 16 by nine and four by three, that's it. They also include an option for mini games, which I never got to work for me. I turned it on and off and just couldn't figure out what the hell it was. Going into the graphic settings, which are under display, 
It's a really limited list of options here for you, especially for the graphic settings, which you've got a low, medium, and high option only, and no example or notes to describe what that means. There's no colorblind mode option in here, which is really sad because for a game as beautiful as Okami, that uses such rich, deep, contrasting colors, it's really unfortunate that they don't have this option in there for folks that need it. To be fair regarding some of the graphic options, the game does use a really unique art style. So changing this graphic option or that one from very low to ultra may not be reasonable. However, if you're only gonna give us a low, medium, and high setting, at least put some notes or an example picture in the settings so that we know what we're changing. All in all, the settings in Okami were a major disappointment for me. And I give it one out of five stars. In 2017, if you're gonna port a game to PC, there are some fundamentally basic things that need to be available so that we can tailor the game to how we play it. So, huge disappointment for Okami regarding the settings. But, let's move on and talk about the graphics. And I'm super excited to talk about the graphics because this is one area that Okami really shines. It uses a unique paintbrush watercolor style art that creates a really awesome and beautiful world. As I adventured through Okami, I was always blown away at some of the beautiful scenes and really neat areas that they created in the game. I typically don't like games that look really cartoony, but Okami's art direction is just this really unique style that I've never experienced. And they use these really deep, rich colors that contrast with each other and mixed in with some of the game objects or characters or buildings in the world, they just made this really vibrant, beautiful experience. They did a good job of tying a lot of those visual elements to ways that you can actually interact in the world with characters or in-game objects. For instance, the celestial brush you can use really allows you to interact with the world in an engaging way and be a part of the art that they created. You can actually change the time of day from day to night or night to day, impact water, wind, cut through rocks and wood, really just pull you in. There was always something cool to look at. And the art direction really lends to Japanese culture as well, where the way buildings are designed or the landscapes that you're adventuring through or the enemies that you're battling, they are all directly connected. I've looked at some of the comparison videos that show off the old Okami versus the new remastered version, and I gotta say that Capcom was really successful at taking an old game and giving it a beautiful refresh in 2017. I give graphics a four out of five stars. The visuals were absolutely captivating, made me feel a part of the world and want to explore, and it was just cool to appreciate all of the beautiful watercolor paintbrush style art that was in the game. Okay, let's move on and talk about the story. And in Okami, you play a dog that's a god, and you go on this huge adventure uh, to fight evil and rid it of its darkness that's spreading across the world. And one thing that's really unique about the story is you get to meet all these characters that are based on uh, historical Japanese culture and folklore. The main characters in the game were all really well developed and had interesting relationships with each other. Now, the game is rated E for everyone, so there is a lot of writing and humor in the game that was geared more towards a younger crowd, and I had a hard time connecting with some of that, and some of it honestly was just straight up cringeworthy. The overall concepts were really neat, and as I played through the game, I really felt part of these huge story arcs that were transformative to the world that I was in. 
Some of the characters and enemies that you encounter in the game were so cool looking that I actually went online and Googled some of them to learn the history and find out more about what the relevance of that character was in Japanese culture. I can't just praise the story though, there were some absolutely horrible aspects of it. For instance, there were so many cutscenes that just went on and on, and the dialogue and writing was just horrible in the game. Again, it was all pretty adolescent, but that wasn't necessarily the issue. The problem was is that it was just written bad. And not only that, but a lot of the concepts they use in the story repeat over and over in the game. You'll get through one major story arc and then start another one and find that halfway through, you're talking to a lot of the same characters, doing a lot of the same things, and what's getting played out is just the same thing that was before in a little bit different way. I'm really split on the story here. On one hand, I feel like it was way too long for the ideas that they used, and they just kept recycling the same concepts over and over. I mean, really, if they would have refined some of the writing and cleaned up the delivery, I feel like 10 to 15 hours could have been completely eliminated from the game, and it would have actually made it a better experience. On the other hand, I really love some of the characters, some of the story arcs were awesome, and the ending was very cool. So, I'm gonna give the story three out of five stars. Again, I really enjoyed it. It was a little bit of a slow start, but the first major story arc was cool, and they wrapped it up with a badass ending. It was just too hampered down by repetition, poor writing, and delivery. Okay. Next up, let's talk about the gameplay. And here's another category where I really feel on the fence. And this was just something that kept coming up for me in Okami. I felt like I was in this really creative, unique world, completely surrounded with beauty that just kept getting hampered down by too much repetition, poor writing or execution. I want to go into some detail regarding the gameplay because I was so on the fence here. Exploring and working through missions in the world is a good place to start and is very cool with the abilities that you learn throughout the game. Okami is an easy game. There's not a lot of fulfillment that you're going to get out of it being a challenge. So if that's what you're looking for, you're not going to find it here. The game is fun though. And I did get those rewarding feelings as I cleared large areas from being consumed by the darkness that you have to battle through in the game. I really felt like my actions were both having an impact on the world and on the characters in it, which was really cool. There's also some very cool weapons in the game. There's a few different classes and you have different weapons within those classes that you can equip to your character. This also helped keep the fighting fresh because certain weapons did more damage to certain characters. So you got to mix up your styles and what you were using based on who you were fighting. You could also visit local dojos in the game to learn new fighting techniques, which was pretty cool. Replayability was a bit of an issue for me though. The gameplay can just be really tedious. You literally have to fight the same enemies and even the bosses over and over. It happens a ton in the game, and when I would encounter a boss or an enemy that I had already beaten, it was just a major disappointment. Going back to the game being easy, all the enemies are pattern based as well, and it's not hard to learn their patterns. Once you do, they become extremely easy to melt, and after fighting the same character countless times, I felt like my time was just straight up being wasted. I literally started to avoid all unnecessary battles about halfway through the game. And the fact that the boss fights are duplicated was just such a letdown. Three times I had to fight the same boss. And these fights don't take five minutes. You can fight a boss for 15 to 20 minutes or longer just because of the pattern based style of fighting in the game. The duplicated missions and enemies and conceptually repeating story just made the gameplay feel like a big ass drag through the mud. This aspect unnecessarily extended the game 
and really killed the momentum for me. I do want to mention that the game is locked at 30 frames per second as well, which might be a non-starter for a lot of people. It does create some blurriness too. Each time I started the game or stepped away and came back, my eyes would have to readjust. It wasn't bad enough that it made me feel sick though, and I can be pretty sensitive to blur, so it didn't kill the game, but it is an annoying aspect. I do want to highlight a really fun part of the gameplay, which is the paintbrush mechanic. They call it the Celestial Brush, which is a really cool ability you can use both in the open world and in battles. It comes with 13 different brush abilities that you can learn, and they all play some sort of role in solving puzzles, exploring through the world, or fighting enemies. I was a little skeptical about it at first, but eventually I totally came to love this mechanic. And since you're playing a dog in the game, I started out thinking that I was going to feel more vulnerable and fragile, but using the Celestial Brush ability in the game, I really felt powerful. It made me feel like I had special abilities over my enemies, and using them in battle was really cool. I do want to talk about two remaining items regarding the gameplay that really bothered me, and the first of the two being the camera angles. Now, Okami is a third-person game, and when you're in small and closed areas, or if you need to look up in a certain direction, sometimes the camera can really struggle and force you to look in a direction that you don't want to be looking in. This can even occur during battles, which can really be frustrating. But there is a lot of platforming in the game where you need to be looking in a specific direction to make sure that you're going to jump or grab or land where you need to, so this can definitely be a frustrating thing in the game. The final thing is the in-game menus, and specifically this can be frustrating during battles. If you ever want to use a health item or use an item in your inventory that will boost your defense or your attack power, or even possibly change what weapon you have equipped to fight a specific enemy, you're going to have to completely exit out of the battle to go into your menu, and then scroll down to select which inventory you want to go into, scroll down, find the item you want, and then select to use it. It really killed the momentum and the flow for me during battles. With all that said, I'm really split on the gameplay here. On one hand, there were so many things that I loved and had fun with. On the other hand, there were so many things that I hated about it. So, I'm gonna give it... 3 out of 5 stars. And I don't know that Capcom is gonna address any of these issues. They did mention that the 30 frames per second cap was a required limitation due to the engine used to build the game. but. If they would just add in some key rebind ability, let you use some quick keys for items in your inventory, and improve the maps and put some locations on there, it would just make the game feel so much more smooth and accessible. Okay, that's it for gameplay. Let's move on and talk about the final category today, the audio. And this is another big mixed bag for me where Okami has some really cool music and fun sound effects, but it also has the most atrocious voice acting that I have ever heard in a video game. I'm not joking, it's not even voice acting. It's this weird digital sound effect that they used to mimic voicing, but it doesn't actually say any words. It's just gibberish and it repeats over and over as the text slowly reveals itself to you on the screen. It is a f***ing nightmare. You got a little taste of it in the intro, but for real, for a game that took me 37 hours and is filled with cutscenes that are dialogue based, if I hadn't found out I could turn the voices off in the settings, I would have absolutely quit this game a long time ago. They are that bad. So what I want to do with you is have a little experiment here where I'll show you a cutscene that has the voices in it, and then I'll show you the same cutscene with the voices removed. And I want you to pay attention to how you feel during the conversation, what you're paying attention to, what you notice, and what your overall experience is like 
with the voices on and with the voices off. And just notice what's different. For me, it was a huge difference having them off and completely saved the game for me. Check it out. Personally, I hated the weird little digital voice sound effect that they had in this game. And I'm so grateful that I could turn that shit off. And when I did, my experience was I started to appreciate what was going on more and noticed things and actually felt what the game wanted me to experience. So I'm really glad I could turn that off. However, it really pissed me off and I'm giving Okami's audio a two out of five stars. It was just such a big missed opportunity in my mind where they could have had real voice actors come in and just do a bang up job saying actual words and portraying the real emotions that were in the game. So, unfortunately it was a big miss there for me, even though the music and the sound effects were pretty good. It just hurt the game a lot in my book. Okay, that's it for audio. And let's wrap things up with my final score for Okami. And I wanna start off by saying that I knew Okami was a 2006 PS2 game getting remastered and ported to PC. And since I had never played it, I started doing a little bit of research to understand the game's history and what its reputation was like in the industry. But I almost immediately backed off because what I found was nothing but critical acclaim and almost perfect scores across the board over the years. And I wanted to go into the game with a fresh perspective and just let my experience be whatever it was going to be with the game. So I did that and after beating it and considering everything that we've talked about today, I give Okami three out of five stars. It's a good game with a neat story. It has some absolutely beautiful art and it has some cool mechanics as well, but it also has its issues. It's super repetitive and recycles a lot of the same ideas. A lot of the writing is poor. There's a huge miss opportunity with the voice acting in my opinion. And frankly, it's a shitty port. So. That's my score for Okami. I will say that if you're into really casual adventure games, then I would check Okami out. I think you'd really enjoy it. Uh, but if you're not, stay away. Unless you have kids, then this would be a really cool game for them to play. There's a lot of neat educational stuff in there that you could engage with them on uh, around Japanese culture and folklore and it would just be a fun world to enjoy with them. So that's it folks. Thank you very much for tuning in and stay tuned for the next Germs Garage. GG, I'll see you next time.